Dock Base Electronics here. Today I'm going to void the warranty on my Rigol DS1054Z. This oscilloscope is the darling of the internet if you're a member of the Best Bang for the Buck fanboy club, and I am definitely a fanboy of Best Bang for the Buck. This is also my first oscilloscope. I've never had one before. I've always wanted one, but they were just out of my price range, so at around $400, give or take. This was at the top end of what I can afford, but oh my gosh, it is such a great tool. I'm so glad that I broke out the wallet and bought it. But if you do also listen to the internets, the, there's a couple of complaints about this. One is the sound of the fan, and as you can see, the oscilloscope's running right now, so I don't know if you can hear it. I don't find the fan noise that objectionable. Maybe others do. But I'll tell you what I do find objectionable, and this is what a lot of other folks struggle with as well, is this knob right here. It doesn't have a little detent in it, so it just smoothly turns, and I struggle with this darn thing. And I've used this oscilloscope probably 50, 60 hours now. At first I got it, I thought, well, I'll try it out, and I'll see if, if it's really all that annoying. And as time went on, I got more and more bothered by it. So this is the problem I have. So for example, if I want to change something with a lot of choices, you know, it's oh, it's just it's just a fussy thing. And then you've got to turn it. And probably nine times out of ten, I can get it just right where I want it the first time. But then sometimes I'll click it and it'll jump to the next measurement. So what I've done is I've purchased this, which is a replacement rotary knob, and it, I don't know if you can hear that at all, but it's, certain, it's got little detents and then it also clicks in and out. So in order to put that in, you have to void your warranty. So that's what we're going to do today. There it is, warranty tag. So it's about to get cut. I've seen some folk that have tried to defeat this, and I'm sure I could probably do the same. But really, if uh, there were a warranty problem, and I sent it back to the factory, and they opened it up and saw that I'd made a change, clearly the fact that the warranty tag is in place doesn't uh, mean that they have to warranty it. I am a firm believer in making things the way you like them. So here we go. We're going to take my other one here, and... Goodbye. It's all done. See, it didn't hurt a bit. Okay, now let's take this off. Now, as you see, I just cut the warranty tag, so I've never actually been into this before. We'll see. screws appear to be the same size, which is good, makes it easier to put it back together. I learned a long time ago, if it don't go or come easy, there's probably a reason for it. Rather than force it, it's usually better idea to figure out what's stopping it from coming. Alright, there we go. So, that appears to be the power supply of things, side of things. We'll put that aside for now. And it looks like Looks like there's another metal case that's right here, so I'm going to take that off first. My desire here is to undo as little as possible. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Alright, what did I say about if it don't come easy, it probably don't, probably don't come. Yep, there we 
There we go. See? Okay, we work our way down. That's the bit that's going to get replaced. Here's its replacement. Superficially, it appears to be the same. So, that's good. Let's go ahead. What else have we got here, just in case you get into this, you want to see what it looks like. We have a little ribbon cable that comes out the side there. And that's the only attachment I see. I've got the membrane on this side. into those holes and then another membrane board on this side. All right, now these are different, so I'm going to put them in a different spot in my box. We'll set the cover here aside and we're going to go after go and we'll set this piece aside. So it wasn't too bad. Just looking at the bit that we have to desolder. look too bad. Just twists, each twist. And then down here, those have got the notches. They could have easily, easily put this one in up here. It would have been so simple to do at the factory. And I can't imagine there's much cost difference, you know, especially in bulk. But, all right, next step, uh, I'm going to get set up to do a little bit of desoldering. So, here right, let's get started. That's the uh, solder that needs to come off. So let's just do it. Got my uh, Eco soldering iron fired up, and I've got my engineer solder sucker. I do a review. I do a review of this in another video. I'm not a real fan of this engineer solder sucker, but at this point it's the only solder sucker I have, so I'm gonna use it. It does an okay job. Actually, it does a really good job, except after you use it a bit, it tends to get clogged. Yeah, I'm going to try and use this solder sucker on that. We'll go right over here to the solder braid. So in another video I do a review of this solder braid. One of the things it has to have is because the braid itself with no flux on it so you got to add your own flux Which I do like this the ability to twist that back in and pull in and just show the amount of solder wick you want to solder and then really nice because 
protects your hands from the heat. You can get right down onto the part that's being worked on and you don't have to burn your fingers. So, yeah, this is one of my favorite things here. Well, I think you get the idea. I'm going to change the makeup of this so I can actually get a really good view at it. So I'll be back when I get that thing out. Okay, we're back. So got that out of there. Typical what you would expect from uh, getting something with lots of pins and lead-free solder out. And a fair bit of work, but it's gone. So now let's test fit this guy. Crush fingers that it fits. Click. Ah, perfect. Like it should have been there from the beginning. Yep. All notchy, twisty, perfect. Okay, now let's solder that bad boy in and we'll put her back together. So this is going to be completely fascinating because I'm sure None of you have ever seen soldering before. I'm kidding, of course. Okay, I'm almost done here. All right, that went in a whole bunch easier than it came out. Uh, I think at this point, I'm just gonna put it back together. It's just gonna go back together opposite of how it came apart which I just showed you so just play that video in reverse and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes or actually instantly from your perspective to show you the finished product so as I was putting this back together I noticed something I wanted to show you guys it's, it's a really nice piece of equipment this Rigol they put indexing pins here so you can't get it wrong I put it on and it just locked in place I'm like how did that do that so quickly? Well, there's these indexing pins. You know, maybe it's for manufacturing, but you know, once those are there, you get those screws in. This front panel is not going anywhere once you get it screwed back down. Just a really nice thing. Thought I'd pop that in because I just noticed it. Here's a tip for self-tappers. So these little screws are great if you use them once, but as you screw things in and out over time, it'll tend to chew the plastic up that it goes into. So what I will do is when I put one of those back in a hole, I turn it backwards, and then I, when I hear the click right there, that says it's falling back into them, turn it backwards, um, right there. Now when I turn it forwards, I'm in the old threads, so I'm not cutting old threads. Still won't make self tappers last forever, but uh, it certainly helps. Oh, here's another one, right? Okay, so turn that in right there. And then it just twists in nice and easy. So there's another tip. I keep finding things to like about this Regal. Simple things that they probably didn't even need to do. For example, right here they've beveled this uh, mounting hole so that when this beveled screw goes in, it's going to pull it right into squ right into square. Yeah, that's nice. And an extra step in manufacturing. It's amazing how cheaply they sell this thing for how nice of a construction that they've put into it. Okay, it's all back together. Let's see if it works. Power's on. Screen lights up. LEDs are flashing. Mm -hmm. 
looking promising. Yep, that looks good. Let's try the functions. We'll try this probe because there were a lot of choices there. Oh, look at that. Click, click, click. Let you just go right to where you want and then it stops and it doesn't jump off where you put it to. So, clearly, this is the way Rigol should have done it the first time. Anyway, we've ruined the warranty, but improved the functionality of the thing. If you like this, please subscribe, click like, share it with your social media, and we'll see y'all later.